The ghostly form of this dog jumps up and licks your face. You spend some time playing with it, but eventually decide that it's time to move on. As you start to walk away, you notice that you're being followed. Seems this ghost pupper has taken a liking to you. Hello, hello, and welcome to Tuna's Tales. For this week's Pondering Monsters, we'll be covering the Renine from Stibble's Codex of Companions. Before continuing, I want to call out that while I won't be talking about it directly, an underlying theme to this encounter is the death of a pet, since this friendly little ghost is the spirit of someone's pet that got separated from their owner and has come back to look for them. No gruesome details to be had here, and no animals were harmed in the making of this, but if the concept is too much, then consider checking out one of my other encounter videos. And if you've never heard of Stibble's Codex of Companions before, no worries. What we've got here is a book filled with different creatures that can be used as pets, as well as rules for training, bonding with, and battling those pets Pokemon style. So if you want to see how your party deals with a ghost dog that starts following them out of the blue, then let's get into it. As our heroes walk through the forest on their way to their next destination, one of them hears a rustling in the bushes nearby. As they draw their weapons, ready for an ambush, they see the spectral form of a dog come floating out towards them. It rushes over to one of our heroes and begins to float around them excitedly. Unsure of what to do, our heroes spend some time playing with this ghost dog before continuing on their way. As they move on, however, they notice that this creature is following them, and eventually our heroes decide to adopt it. As they travel from place to place with their new spectral companion, they teach it, and it teaches them, as only a ghost dog can. Our heroes name it Sir Snuffer the Pupper Esquire, and everyone was happy for some time. Sadly, that happiness wouldn't go on forever. As the party made their way into a new town one day, Sir Snuffer did what he does best and started sniffing around before starting to wander off. The party followed to see where he was going, and eventually he floated through the door to one of the houses nearby. Wasting no time, our heroes rush in to find a man lying on his deathbed with Sir Snuffers licking his face. As they get closer, they can see that there is some amount of resemblance between this old man and the hero that Sir Snuffers had been following all this time. As they talk with this old man, they learn that Sir Snuffer was his pet many years ago, but they got separated at some point. It becomes clear that their beloved companion had been looking for his original owner this whole time and simply mistook one of them as its human. Our heroes spend some time with the old man, thinking of what to do next, as they look on bittersweetly. Oh no! Don't tell me the heroes are going to lose their pet! Don't worry, Red. I'm not that mean. I should have known you would have had something planned here. I always do. But that's beside the point. What questions have you got for me? Well, this encounter seems a little slow, doesn't it? It does. That's kind of by design here. Why is that? Well, if you're using stibbles, there isn't really any reason to fight the creatures in there. That means this needs to be a non-combat encounter. Additionally, Stibbles is meant to be used as a source to give your players pets in-game. This is a slow encounter because, according to the Renine's lore, it's looking for its former owner, and when it finds them, it stays with them. I don't know about you, but I don't want to give my players something just to take it away again in the next breath. That makes sense. So it's slow because you want your players to have time to use these rules and the companion. Basically. After some time, or whenever you feel it's appropriate, you can start the conclusion portion to this encounter. I feel like that might not be well received. You're probably right, but I have some thoughts on how you can soften things for your party that I'll be covering a little later. For now though, it should be said that you shouldn't just spring this rule set on your players. Talk as a table to see if you want to adopt these options. If everyone's on board with it, then you're good to bust this encounter out. Speaking of busting this encounter out, when's a good time to start this? That's actually the thing I like most about this encounter. You can do this whenever and wherever you want. No level requirements, no real scaling to be done, just a simple and straightforward little event. I'll say. I feel like there's some lore-specific things that the players may need to learn about this creature, though. Right, Tuna? That you are, Red. The lore from Stibbles for this creature is actually perfect for the approach we're taking. Well, how can we get that to the players? There are at least two ways that we can do this. The first requires that your players take the initiative and try to research this creature. If they do so, then you can get them that juicy, juicy lore. And the second? For that, we'll need an NPC. If your players don't go researching on their own, then you can have someone see this spectral pooch following them and offer their condolences. Why condolences? Well, if this NPC knows what this creature is, then they know that it used to be alive. They're assuming that someone in the party is the Renine's original owner here. Plus, someone coming up to you out of nowhere and saying, I'm sorry for your loss, is going to get a conversation started. 
Oh, I've said that right before stealing gold from adventurers. I'm sorry. What? I'm a dragon. Anyway, once you get a conversation going, you can tell your players whatever you want regarding the Renine. Then how do you reveal the original owner? Simple. Let the Renine do it. Oh, this is the wandering off part, isn't it? Yes. When you feel that it's time to have your players make a difficult choice, you can have the Renine sense its original owner and start floating in that direction. What do you mean by difficult choice? Well, the Renine is looking for its original owner and has just mistaken someone in the party for them up until now. Once it finds the original, it won't want to leave them. But you said you don't like taking things away from the players. Calm your horns. I'm not taking things away from anyone here. They've spent enough time with the Renine and ideally formed a bond with it as well that I would let them try to convince it to stay with them. Or they can try to convince the old man that he should give the Renine to the party. They do have the option to give it up, but I'm not going to be forcing that on anyone. I don't know, Tuna. Seems a little problematic either way. Again, you're not wrong, but like I said, I think I have a thing for this. That being said, do you have any more questions for me? No, and whatever you have better be good, or else... Right. With that thinly veiled threat, let's look at tying this together. As you're all walking through the woods, you hear a rustling in some nearby bushes. When you turn to look at what might be the source, you see, bounding out of the foliage, a translucent blue dog. It seems to be hovering a little bit off the ground, and it excitedly approaches you, Isrissa. When it comes to kicking this off, you can start it however and wherever you want. Your party can find the Renine in the woods, the back alley of a town, or deep in a dungeon. All are good choices here. Once the Renine has been introduced to the party, it's up to them if they want to take it with them. If they don't immediately take it with them, then just have it follow them and give them the puppy dog eyes whenever they look back at it. If that still doesn't work, then your players are monsters. I'd like to take a second here to call out that the Renine doesn't have to be a dog. Its lore just states that it was someone's incredibly loyal pet. Make it whatever type of creature you want. A hawk, a cat, a snake, whatever you think your players will want to interact with. Once you've decided on what creature it is, your party can start bonding with it. The rules for bonding with a creature from Stibbles are fairly straightforward. Usually during a short or long rest, the character that has a bond with the creature can do some sort of activity with their companion playing with it, studying it, etc. Sometimes there's a check involved, and if the player is successful with it, then the character's bond with the creature goes up by one. The higher the bond level, the stronger the companion. The bonding phase of this encounter can go on for as long as you like. If you give them the Renine at level 2, you can let them travel with it until level 20 if you feel like it. At some point along the way, though, is where I'd recommend bringing in the NPC that I suggested earlier, if your party doesn't do the research on their own, that is. While sitting at the local inn one evening, you see an old woman approaching you. Oh, such a cute doggy. I'm sorry for your loss, but I'm glad it found you again. The purpose of this is to get your party curious about what this creature might be, because it isn't just a ghost pet. It also serves as a bit of foreshadowing about what may come with this creature. With this, the NPC can tell the party the tragic lore of the Renine, that it's someone's pet that passed away without their owner nearby, but that it was so loyal that they came back as a ghost to find them. The Renine spends as much time as it needs to to find them, and when it does, it will never leave their side again. If the owner has already passed, though, then the Renine will become an eternal guardian of their resting place. However, this is what happens when the owner welcomes the Renine back. If it's rejected instead, well, bad things are going to happen. A rejected Renine will turn into a spirit of fear and hatred, hell's bent on attacking its former master. Once the party learns of all this lore, then they should have an idea of what to expect sometime in the future and can prepare for it accordingly as you get ready for the conclusion to this encounter. As you're walking through the town square, you notice that your ghostly companion seems to be sniffing around with purpose. You try to see what they're so interested in, but they don't seem to be acknowledging you. As you follow them to whatever scent they're tracking, you see them walk through the door of a nearby house and hear some excited barking. If your party enters this house, they will see that their pet has jumped onto what appears to be an old man's deathbed, and it's licking his face excitedly. Most interestingly though, the old man appears to have a striking resemblance to the party member that the Renine has been following the most. If you have any characters that have a long-lost family member, then this can be a good tie-in for that. Plus, it explains the resemblance. Here's where the heartbreak might hit your party the hardest, as it should be fairly clear that this person is the Renine's former owner. With the lore that the party received some time earlier, they should know roughly what comes next. But like I said to Red, I've got a plan for this. At this point, the party can choose to just let the Renine go. It might not be an easy choice, but it is an option they can take. 
Otherwise, they can talk to the old man, learn about him, his life, spend some time with him in his last moments, and before he passes, he can tell his old pet that it should go with the party member that's been caring for it. You can include skill checks for persuading the Renain to go with the party, or for the party to convince it to come with them, but personally, I wouldn't require that. This is probably going to be a sad moment already, and I don't think that leaving things up to the dice will make it better here. What this leaves us with is an encounter that doesn't really have any challenges, and is just meant to emotionally gut-punch your party. I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem very entertaining to me. So let's reward your party a little bit for it. If your party spends time with the old man, leaves the Renine with him, or are just overall some decent humans to him, who's to say that he can't point them at some treasure? He's seen a lot and done even more. He might know of some magic item, treasure hoard, or other special thing that he can then tell the party about. They were decent, and now they get a reward in return. Of course, I'm not going to tell you what to put in for that part, as this is now a stepping stone to literally anything you want in your campaign. At the end of it all, you can still decide to have the Renine recognize the bond the party has made with it and choose to continue traveling with them. A real Airbud comes back home moment. If you want to look at the Renine being rejected by its former owner though, then that could be an interesting approach too. Have the old man reject the Renine, and as it's turning into an evil shadow beast, the party member who's bonded with it can then make some checks to try and pull the Renine back to its former self and cement themselves as the Renine's true owner. If you do go that route, then you can set any DCs you need to be around the 12 or 13 range for lower levels and 14 to 16 range for higher levels. Otherwise, there's not much to do when it comes to scaling on this one, as this encounter works pretty much the same at any level of play. And that's all there really is to it. Your party can make a new friend, travel with them, have to make a potentially hard choice, and get rewarded for it in the end. If you run this, then definitely make sure your table is okay with this type of subject matter. Pets can be a touchy topic for many people, and that's okay. End of the day, you want to do things that everyone has fun with, and the joy of tabletop games is that even the sad bits can be fun. If you liked this non-combat encounter, then leaving a like and subscribing if you aren't already would be appreciated. Otherwise, if you have any suggestions for monsters that you want to see, a particular type of encounter, or if you have any questions about my encounters in general, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. With that, thanks for letting me talk to you all, and until next time, keep pondering.